today what we're going to do is jump inside of on one and i'm going to show you how easy it is to remove distractions and really kind of get the edit that you're going for on your image so let's go ahead and jump into on one for the raw and take a look at how to do that so here we are inside of on one and you can see i have a photo here of a gentleman who was walking his dog you know it's nothing uh, to write home about, but there's these people over here that I don't care to have in the frame. So let's go ahead and get rid of them. To do this, we're gonna come over to the left pane and select the healing brush tool because the remove tool, which is the generative eraser, that's what we're gonna use today, is located inside of the healing and retouching section of on one. So. We're going to go ahead and hover over this. Now notice there's a keyboard shortcut on a Mac option shift Q. I imagine that's going to be alt shift Q on a Windows computer. Someone confirm that in the comment section for me, please. But I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now that I have selected the generative eraser tool, it's going to analyze my image and it'll allow me to paint over some things and get rid of stuff. Now, before I get too deep into the painting, let's go over some of the settings because it is extremely important to know how to use the tool the right way. So we'll come up here to the top of the workspace and you can see I have paint and erase. I'm going to leave mine set to paint. Now, this is set to distractions. These are kind of like presets. And if I click this drop down, you can see I can erase wires, people or vehicles. Now. What this ends up doing is it's going to erase things without you needing to paint. This is an update to the tool since its release, and it's actually relatively good to use, but I'm not gonna use that for today's purposes. Now, if I click this puzzle piece here, it's actually going to activate the Super Select AI or the Quick Brush AI tool. And this allows you to easily select things inside the image. So if I hover over the image now, it allows me to select this person in the background here. And I can just click and select and then do the same thing over here. And then of course, if I wanted to, I could have zoomed in, but I don't find a need to do that. So the next icon is the gear icon, and this is by far one of the most important icons in the generative eraser menu. And the reason for that is this is what's going to determine what your product is going to look like when it actually generates, all right? So the option that I have selected right now is local non-gen AI. And this is a model that has been placed in here for people who don't have a computer that's powerful enough to do the hardware accelerated learning and run the AI on their computer local to their machine without using the internet. This is the model that you can use. Now the results will likely vary and you know that's gonna base, be based on your image and whatever your preference scale is. Now if you click this drop down, you get two other options. The one that I use 100% of the time is local gen AI. And what this is gonna do is because I'm using an M1 Mac mini here, it's going to use the accelerated chip on, on this machine and it's going to analyze the image like it already did and replace that with pixels that it believes are the most appropriate. Now, the third option here, anyone can use it as long as you want to pay for the credits, but you do need an internet connection. And that's the difference between these other two. These two, you do not need an internet connection. One is just gonna use your hardware. The other one is just going to use the image as best it can. So if you have a computer that on one has the minimum requirements for, for this tool to work the best, then you can go ahead and use local gen AI and it's going to work out just fine for you. Now, if you don't wanna uh, use either of those and you wanna use Stability AI, then as long as you have an account, you can set that up and you also have to have a connection to the internet and you don't have to worry about computer specs at that point either because all the processing is going to be in the cloud so anyone can use it, all right? But the one that I use 100% of the time on my Mac mini is this local gen AI feature. 
So I'm going to go ahead and select that. The next icon here is just information and it's actually really good information. And I do recommend you take some time to look through this by pressing the next button next button here and just kind of advance through it make sure that you are making selections based off of the recommendations so you can get the best results possible so now i'm going to go ahead and hit generate and we're going to see what the local gen ai is going to do for this image so this actually brings me to a really good point in the video where i think it's important to explain you want to have a really good computer to run the generative AI tools local to your machine. Now on one does have recommended specifications. I do recommend that you follow those. So before you purchase the software, download a trial, see how well it's going to work on your machine and also make sure that you're meeting those system requirements. Now, if you're finding value in this video, go ahead and smash the like button. And if you're new here, consider subscribing because this place is really cool to learn about On One Photo Raw. Now, let's get back into the video. On One completed its processing and it threw in what it thinks makes the most sense for that area. Now, is it the greatest quality? No. But is it good enough for what I need to do with this image? And I think the answer to that is yes, because if you weren't paying attention to that aspect of the image previously, you wouldn't even know that there was an issue there. You would just assume that that's exactly how the photo came out. I trust that this is going to get better with time. This is their first iteration of putting generative erase tools inside of on one. So I do believe that it's going to get better with time but this is good enough for this particular image. Now, if you don't like the results that you're getting, you can definitely change your uh, settings here and you know try one of the other two options. And then you can also just hit retry and that's going to regenerate that area to see if you get something different that maybe you will like. But eventually, once you get something that you do like, then you can come over here to the right side and hit the blue check mark. Now that's gonna commit this to the image, but you're still working in a non-destructive workflow. And the reason I say that is if I come over here to the right side where my layers are located, you'll see that I now have two image layers here. The top layer is the one with the actual retouch or the removal generative eraser uh, render, and then the bottom layer so i just turned off the top layer that's why you're seeing the actual items or the people that i removed earlier and if i turn this layer back on then you'll see that it's just covering up that area all right and that's all that this top layer is and now i can edit this image like i would normally so let's just go ahead and throw on a preset for today's purposes to simplify this i think that this will look pretty good Maybe in, you know, let's try architecture because why not? You know, it's trees. Architecture makes perfect sense. It really doesn't, but I'm going to do it anyway, because that's the beauty of working in on one. And this actually doesn't look bad. So if I go ahead and click this preset here, A3, even though it's architecture, and I guess that's another side note for today's video. Don't worry so much about the name of the subcategory for the preset. Test out presets on your images to see what they look like. I think the subcategories are great for recalling a preset, but they don't always do justice to what they're really good for. And in this case, I think that this particular preset works really well here. All right. Now, what I think I need to do is just throw in a vignette. So I'm focusing right here into the center. And so I'm just going to go ahead and use a big softy today because I think that that's the easiest way of throwing vignettes on. So we're going to click add filter and then we're going to come down to vignette and I'm going to make sure that this is above everything. And then I'm just going to click on big softy and that brings us right here into the center. And then, of course, if it's too strong, every effect inside of On One Footer Raw comes with an opacity slider. So you can just fade this into your image to taste. And I think that that looks pretty good. And I'll even make this a little bit larger 
of a vignette and just pull this back to minimize it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the image before and after. So this is the before with the actual generative eraser render on it. And then after throwing in that architecture preset and putting a big softy over it, we got to this relatively quick. If you got questions about how these tools work, please drop them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm not a technician for this software. I'm just a huge fan. I do use it a lot and I do use these tools. So I'll do my best to answer the questions, but I may have to refer you over to the tech support if you're running into some deeper technical issues than what I'm able to answer. With all that being said, if you want to learn more about On One Photo Raw, there's two options for you. You can sign up for a coaching call with me. You'll find a link for that down in the description box below. And if you don't want to do that, then consider watching the next video that's popping up on screen now. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.